When we look at the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100, when we look at the stock market at a broad viewpoint, from a trading perspective, the past day or two has been really choppy. And I, and I believe there's a little bit of question of overall direction, but it's important that we're not biased when we're looking at this, but we're looking at the cold hard facts. Now, when we look at a few pieces of data that we're going to talk about here in a second, I think it's really clear the direction that we're moving. Myself personally, you have to be looking for a continuation to the upside, not from a bias point of view, but from what the chart is telling us and what's happening with these specific stocks. Let's not waste any time. Let's get to it. Now, the first thing we're going to do is jump into something like the NASDAQ. When we look at the NASDAQ, go to the four hour chart, we zoom out, as you can see. Um, in my opinion, as you can see here, higher lows have been developed. You're pushing into highs. You have a clear flat top up here at previous all time highs from 2021. You have a few levels in here we'll talk about here in a second, but I mean, you're really just trying to break out right? Sellers continue to get some pressure, but you can't get any follow through. Now, if you were to get bearish, what would have to happen? You would have to break through this little support down here and put like in some sort of lower low, but that hasn't even happened. Sellers can barely push you down 150 points without getting any follow through from buyers. Now, on top of that, we've seen what's happened with the DXY and yields, right? We've seen the DXY absolutely rip to new highs locally, right? We've seen yields rip as well, following to the up newer highs. But again, the NASDAQ and ES are resilient. We look at something like you know, ES, your all-time high is right up here, 50-30. Um, and you're just looking even better, making locally higher highs and higher lows, mounting previous highs. Now, all you really need to look at on this chart, I can get rid of most of these other lines and supports. I mean, it gets really clear here, though right? You're just mounting previous highs over and over and over and over on repeat. Really think about it. I mean, this is incredibly bullish. Now, you could also argue that you've also developed a little bit of a demand here as well. And you can see a little bit better when you go to something like the two hour, right? It comes really clear as well. So again, you're just bouncing at that level as well. And again, ES and SPY in particular are holding most of the strength. When I go to SPY again, it's super clear. I show you SPY over the past basically week or so, and you can see, look at this level. You just continue to bounce and bounce and bounce off of previous highs that were established just last week, right? And so when I look at this, I'm just like, well, yeah, maybe we're still pretty bullish, right? Things you have to look at. Q's, yeah, a little bit choppier, back and forth, a little bit of downside, but still holding its own, trying to break out. Again, highly impressive. Now, again, you look at this action and it's impressive to say, like, nonetheless. You've seen in today, we saw some semiconductors get some weakness. We saw what was happening at NVIDIA, AMD, and other stocks. But when we get back to it, you see those names recover, specifically the large ones like NVIDIA. Now you've seen Tesla get hit, but try to bounce back as well. So it's like sellers take advantage in the short term, but they can't capitalize. They can't hold you down there. And that's the real issue. So again, I wanna attack a little bit more on bonds, what's happening with some of the data, and then event we'll go into that equity part of the video as well. Stay with me, but let's keep going. Now, before we get too much into spy cues and the rest of that data, I do wanna highlight that typically we get less of our peak or best days on the week going into Tuesday and Wednesday, but I will say that has a lot to do with the you know you typical day-to-days -day that come out there, okay? So definitely understand that. We typically have our lowest closes on Wednesdays based on this data as well. If you want to get more information on this, check down below. The link is down there. But I do want to just talk about that in particular, which again, you can see one of our lowest green days, typically our Tuesday and Wednesday. And spoiler alert, it kind of seems like that worked out again on the day, except bears couldn't hold you down. You saw them attempt to, but they just couldn't do it right? And that is, again, the story of what's taking place here. You continue to hold up stronger and stronger. Now, we also go to volume and look at what's taking place here. You typically are upticking throughout the week, right? That's very important information that we're tracking here, right? We understand that volume is upticking. Now, even with the selling volume today, really quickly checking out that volume, right? 52 million, very lackluster on the volume end. We had better volume yesterday. So sellers, again, try to push through, but the biggest issue is lack of follow through. You get some downward pressure and then nothing else happens and you bounce back up. Again, you need to see some volume from sellers to get you 
back to the downside. And that's just not happening so far. If Jerome Powell's meeting, if all that stuff won't happen on 60 Minutes and the FOMC and this and that won't bring you down, what do you think will? Now, it's also important to realize that the Fed talked today as well. We had specific Fed members. They said in the three-month and the six-month timeframes, the data is good. It's perfect, actually. But what they need is a year-long information on that as well. So more insinuations that the rate cut will come in like J June or July, which is summer, which is when all the data started taking a turn for the best. Again, things you need to be watching and viewing. So again, I think over the next few months, things could really start to heat up specifically in the housing sector. Now, again, we go back to DXY and DXY slowly started to top out here as well. We talked about the head and shoulders that was kind of a play here, but again, the really interesting part is that DXY is ripping and it's not bringing the rest of the market down, right? That's the really concerning part if you're a bear, right? So if we start breaking back below 200, I'd be pretty interested and I think the market will love it as well. You go into the US 30 year yield, again, looking there also, you see yields are staying in our overall box. This is another thing that we were looking at. You had the DXY breakout, but yields continue to stay in that overall range. We would love to see yields get back below that 4.2%, but ultimately we get really bullish when we get below 4%. That's when you really start hammering the longs, in my opinion, and that's where things get the most exciting overall. Okay, so that's what we need to be viewing. So again, we go back into SPY, we look at a few of these levels, and again, you, you can't help, if you disagree, please, I, I would love to have a, a conversation if, with you guys in the comments down below, so let me know. But you are just mounting, like this is what constitutes a bullish trend. Like we look at SPY, is there anything bearish about this? Higher highs, higher lows. And you have to be able to have that viewpoint. Now we had some stocks that you know came down today, but again, Nonetheless, you're still holding up great. Going to something like DIA, the Dow. The Dow bounced fantastic day. Yesterday, obviously on Monday, some of your worst, you know, selling took place. And then today, one of the it was probably the best sector overall or the best ETF performing the best, Dow. So again, this is what you wanted to see. You know, money coming back into here and it's not seeing, you know, increased selling. And you're still doing what? You're still making higher lows as well. As you can see, that is what a bull trend is. Higher highs and higher lows. That's the story and that's what you have to be paying attention to. Now I say it every day, at any point in time, the things and the momentum could change on the charts. So if we start getting aggressive, aggressive selling, if you know we bomb a country and things go terrible and bad news comes out, yeah, that would be bad overall news and it would probably hurt the market. But so far, everything that could hurt the market from a fundamental standpoint of POW, inflation data, earnings, those continue to fuel the market, right? Just saying, that's just the reality of the situation. You would need a crazy black swan event to happen. Could it happen? It could. But if you're sitting there betting on it every single day, you're probably going to lose a lot of money in the long run, personal opinion. So as we look at these equities, I think you have to look at it from that viewpoint. If the SPY, the Dow, and Qs and NASDAQ continue to rip to the upside, Maybe we want to look for the upside. Maybe we want to look for bounce opportunities across the board. Yesterday, I told you Apple is my favorite stock, and it still lists. It's probably the only stock that I'm actually holding overnight for the foreseeable future. But I have a few other names that I think are really shaping up to make us a lot of money in the short term as well as the medium term as well. Let's get to those. So number one, you guys are probably most interested in NVIDIA. Uh, Jay mentioned this one all this morning in Discord. You went down, you filled the gap locally at about the daily gap right there, and you filled even the little gap right there as well. So you fill the gap, boom. And then from that, buyer stepped in immediately and pushed you back into above that 677 level. Now this is a level I'd be watching if you're looking to get bearish on NVIDIA. If you hold below that level, I do believe downside could come in quick. As you hold above 677 and more, you know, more importantly, 680, incredibly bullish in my opinion, right? So keep watching video, still think it looks strong. Meta, now Meta, I will say this, you are making, this is not ideal, okay? So from highs, you're, you can see the trend to the downside, clearly established there, right? Clear, clear, clear. If you break below 452, 453 right here, you know, you're very illiquid. Now I'm not saying you're gonna fill the gap all the way down to 406, that's a crazy guess. I'm not going to say that, but I'd be a fool not to say that you would have quick downside. Now it might get bought up. You have to be paying attention very closely, but below that it would be a shorting opportunity, specifically if you broke retest and got some continuation. But what I will say, as long as you hold this, you can't go short in my opinion to go long. I would want to see you get back above 469. So in between this range, you're playing a very dangerous game, right? So in this range, you don't want to get too crazy. That's what I'd be looking for as well. It's worth mentioning Snapchat just reported earnings and they're kind of, yeah, 
getting demolished. So yeah, not really helping Meta's case whatsoever. Going into Amazon, something I've been watching here. Now again, for Amazon, for me to get bullish, what do you have to do? You get to break, mount, and hopefully hold 171. If you hold that level, you're pushing into 177. Very similar to something like Meta. Massive gap up last week from earnings, and it's almost like it's trying to justify it right now. If you get below 167, I do anticipate downside. Um, the gap fill is around 162. Eh, so again, that's what I'd be looking for there um, and what I'd be watching for on Amazon. In this range, I'm not looking to get crazy, not looking to trade just yet. So again, in the range, clear as day, as you can see, not interested. Outside of the range, very interested. So make sure you understand that. So again, just like that for both ways, especially. Now again, Apple is my favorite name. I'll continue to say this. Before the end of the day, I remember I sent this out to Discord specifically in text messages and said, Apple is my favorite name. It held 187 again this morning. Now it's holding 188. Um, dear God, I'm telling you right now, I'm probably going to roll out my March contracts. I ended up reloading these things. I'm probably going to roll them out. I'm debating tomorrow for like May and just sit on these. I really believe Apple could run over $200. Finally. I really think it can. I'm extremely bullish. I like what's happening. I like the traction. I think everything that could go right is going right for Apple right now. Again, you want to see a hold back above basically 190. Above 190, you're pushing with these back into 191, 192. I would be watching this level right here pretty close, 189.6, your previous level you had right there. But besides that, that's essentially all I'm watching right now on Apple. Very good, a lot of volume, and it's holding up even when you're dipping on the market. This is basically every sign you want to see. AMD, I liked AMD a lot. But again, you, ha you couldn't hold the key levels. Like I mentioned yesterday, we look at AMD and what happened here, right? We talk about the key level. We've been mentioning over and over 174.6. You broke below. You retested once, twice, three times. And this morning you gapped all the way back down. Now you're back at our massive level where you bounced from earnings. Very interesting point there on where you're at right now. Okay. So again, this is your 2021 highs. This is going to be a massive, massive support. As long as you hold 164.7, I have to expect you're going to bounce. And I think it's a buying opportunity. But if you start to break and lose it, then obviously you have to exit. So again, if you break, you get out. I mean, if you retest this, I mean, it's a great short opportunity. I'm not going to lie to you. All the way down to like 151 locally. But the other side of that, if you bounce, because again, NVIDIA is bouncing. If you bounce out of this, you do look decent. And NVIDIA has earnings in the next few weeks. So I definitely be watching for that. So again, 164. 0.5 locally. Um, and again, if you get back above 174.6, I like that again, back into 180. That's been the trade on repeat over and over, just following that trade again and again and again. Microsoft, man, a lot of weakness here, a lot of weakness to say the least. So what you want to see on Microsoft to get bullish again is getting back above 407. I, if you were in Discord, you saw me this morning live trading this. I wanted to get that hold. You couldn't hold on like a 15 minute chart and you just broke back down. Perfect rejection. Boom. I mentioned this in yesterday's video. You're just not holding right now. But the good note is you're holding 404, which is a massive support as well. If you don't hold 404, you're anticipating a touch of 400. So again, that's where I'm at. I want to see Microsoft get back above 407. If it does, I think you're pretty illiquid now back into basically like 409, maybe even 410. But I really think you could push back into highs. They had good earnings. They're going to keep doing well. And they're really just you know making more and more money. These are all signs and good things across the board. I could go into a laundry list of names. Actually, the last one I'm going to cover is going to be Boeing. Boeing's really interesting here. Um, if you look at Boeing, you're basically pinned in between the 200 daily right here. And I already have it marked out so you can see it, but I'm also going to mark it out to the 200 weekly. So you go to the weekly, you, you're right here. So you're just pinned in between these. If you can get back above the 200 daily, I'm pretty bullish to the upside. Um, again, they've been attacked and just ransacked with bad news. But again, Boeing's more of like a long-term buy if you're buying it here. I think you just buy it, forget about it, just have the stock. I think it's eventually going to get a bounce. They basically have a monopoly in the industry worth mentioning. We made a lot of money to the downside, but again, as you're pinched in this level, it's kind of a no trade, but above that key level, I would definitely be bullish. If you break below the 200 weekly, I'd be bearish. Yeah, you got it. The same thing back and forth. So today, again, not the greatest action from futures, kind of just range bound. But the biggest thing that I can take away from this is that one, sellers were very weak. Every time, very, not very, very, very weak, right? You got some initial selling and then it just dies. And that was the story. Volume would spike and then it would die. And then you'd spike to the upside of buying and then you would die. And it was just back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And when I look at this, there's a few things you have to take into account. 
the longer you stay like this, one, you have a monthly expiration coming up February 16th. So you're going to have in the money uh, calls across the board just expiring in the money, which either they have to roll, but they're still going to have to cover no matter what. That could lead to more upside across the whole market. So you need sellers to step in if you're a bear right now. If not, I don't think much is going to change. And I think bulls will continue to retain their overall strength. It's my personal opinion, what I'm looking for right now. I'm not bucking the system. I'm not going short here yet, right? You're making higher highs. You're holding and making higher lows. Very good. That's what a bullish market is. And that's how I have to trade the market. If you have questions, comment down below. See you tomorrow.